It's going to be a little different day today because there's so few of us. If you don't know that Justin had back surgery and he's and broke his ribs, and so you're in a little bit of pain. So thanks for being here. Thanks for all of you guys to make it in this crazy snow apocalypse out there. Although it's not as bad as it seemed like it it, it it's supposed to be, but I'm glad you're here. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to talk about spiritual growth. Um, and looking at Romans 12, 1 and 2 over these next couple of weeks. And today is just kind of a setup, really, in, in many ways from next week. Um, who would like to be different next a year from now than they are right now? Anybody? Yeah, me too. And this is the time of year where, you, where the, our culture sets these things called New Year's resolutions, isn't it? And, um, and it, it can be everything from, like, what, losing weight to... You know, exercising more or get a new job. Um, but for us Christians, generally speaking, when we talk about what we want to be different, we, th- we think of those things, but it's really a bigger picture than that, isn't it? We want to be, we want to grow spiritually. And what I want to talk about here is in Romans 12, 1 and 2, um, Paul, what Paul sets up for us as he, as he continues on in the rest of the letter on how do we grow spiritually? Um, cause I want to be a different person. I really want to be a very different person than I was, um, in 2016. At this point, I want to be, you know, a year from now, I want people to be in my life to go, Brian, you're really different. Um, and the question becomes, how do you do that? Um, cause there's, one of the things it seems like it's frustrating to me, if it isn't to you, is how come we don't seem to change as much as we would like to? Does anybody feel that way? Yeah, you know. And it's one of the one of the charges of the of the the non Christian world for Christians is that you guys just don't live your faith very well, right? And 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 i think i think i think paul gives us some hints here on how we can really be a different person and what we're looking at here again is not um is not h- how do i you know how do i get better education that's not what this topic is about in fact let's let's read through this romans 12 1 and 2 and i think i only have one up there right um i'm going to turn to it most of my verses are not in there today it made it easier on on uh on uh, Misty back there. So if you have a Bible, I'm going to be flipping around in it. I would get one um, if you really want to look at the verses yourself. And because today there, there's not going to be much that are going to be projected. Um, but Romans 12, 1 and 2. Um, let me read through that for you. So I appeal to you, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God which is your spiritual worship. Do, need, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. And then from that point on, he begins to talk about how we are to live as Christians as a response to everything he said up to this point. And today we're just going to look at one, verse one. In fact, not even all of verse one. We're going to look at most of verse one, but not all of it. Um, and again, I just want to talk about that this is, this is I, want to, I want to do two things. One, I want to set, what am I actually talking about, the goal? And two, what is the foundation for it? How do we actually be different? Because if you were to Google, uh, you know, how do you, how do you become less angry? There's a ton of ways, right? that the world says how to be less angry. You can go to Barnes and Noble and, and you, there's a whole huge section of self-help books, isn't there? You know, this is a major topic for the world and in, in many ways it is for us Christians as well. But Paul, I think, gives us something right here. Now let's, let's look at this first thing. I appeal to you brothers, brothers and sisters, right? By the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. I appeal to you. He's urging us to be something different. He wants us to be different. What kind of different? Well, you know, I'm going to come back to the, by the mercies of God. I just want to deal with that as a living sacrifice. Just that, your bodies as a, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. And to present is a pretty straightforward word. It's a, it's a, it's an Old Testament 
sacrificial kind of sense where people in the Old Testament would present a sacrifice. It's, it's like, I'm going to present a gift to you. That's really all it is. Here it is. I'm giving you a gift. Your bodies, well, that's, it, it's not necessarily the whole um, just physical. It's that in this context, it's that instrument that you have that you do everything with. That's the sense. I mean, whether it's your brain or your ears, your hands, or your legs, your eyes, your mouth, what you have, you need to present that as a living sacrifice. Now, living means that this is not a call to suicide bombing. <laughs> because if Paul didn't put that word living there, he could say, I urge you to present your bodies as a sacrifice. Well, you could argue then you're talking about suicide bombers. But that's not Paul's point, right? He's trying to, 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 to it's a way of living. He, he's calling you to a way of life. And the way of life is sacrificial. I, I urge you to present a, as a, yourself as a living sacrifice. But what is that? God does not care about, about us doing sheep and goats. He made that very clear in multiple places in the Old Testament. Hosea 6.6, 6, Micah 6, where he says, you know, well, here, let's look up Micah 6.6. 6. Micah 6.6. 6. That's a hard one for you guys to find because um, it's in the, it's in the um, Minor Prophets. But my, many of you will know the end of it. It says, Micah 6, starting in verse 6. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with, a ca with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of, of my soul? And the answer to all those is obviously no. That's not what God wants. So what does he want? Micah 6, 8. He has shown you, O oh man, what is good and what the Lord requires of you. To do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. You see how what God wants is, is how we live our lives. And that's where I kind of want to talk about here is, is I want to fill out what this meaning of, of a sacrifice is. And, and to do that, I want to go to 1 Corinthians 13. Now, I'm going to summarize a series that I gave over the su summer on what is love. Because I think that's going to really make it pop for us. It did for me. What is it that Paul wants us to be? So in Romans, excuse me, in 1 Corinthians 13, it says, Love is patient and kind, starting in verse 4. Romans 13, verse 4. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love. That's what we want to be like. And love, when it talks, the first thing it says is patience. And remember, patience is not simply... Um, no, being able to endure rush hour traffic well. That's not what patience in this sense means. Patience is delaying justice in hoping for repentance. If you were to look at Romans 9.22, it gives you a sense of it. It says, but God with great patience did not display his wrath on those who deserved it. And that gives you a sense of what this is getting at. It's when somebody does something wrong to you, rather than immediately doing, demanding your rightful justice there of them paying for that wrong, you don't give it to them. It's the, 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 the delay. And so when Paul is talking about being a living sacrifice, that's one of the things he's talking about, is, is having a life that in the midst of dealing with people, you don't immediately smash them, even rightly so, when they've done something wrong to you. Instead, you give them kindness. And kindness is, is this word that, as we could look in, in Matthew chapter 5, where God displays kindness to those who, who is enemies. 
It says, love your enemies, do good to them, bless those who persecute you. You remember that verse, I think. And I don't want to take the time to, to look that up. Um, if I had them all up, we would put them up there. But it's the idea of wanting to bless people who are not nice to you. In fact, one uh, the uh, Webster's 1829 dictionary describes kindness as the dis- disposition that delights in contributing to the happiness of others. It's the disposition that delights in contributing to the happiness of others, supplying their needs, their wants, alleviating their distresses, distresses all not reluctantly or with bitterness. In other words, it's that mentality of, I just want to do something good for you in spite of them being mean to me. See, this is what Paul is asking. He's saying when you, being a sacrifice, that's what this is talking about. We want to be patient and kind. Not, as it says here in Romans, envious or boastful. Having to do with this envy has to do with this wanting to, I want what's good the good they have for myself. I'm envious of their job. I'm envious of their car. I'm envious of their, of their security in their life. It's like, I don't want them to have it. I want to have it. Boasting, it has to do with this inward and outward pride that says, I'm better than you. Irritable and resentful it has to do with this, this care, thinking about that myself over everybody else. Rude and selfish, it's all of that. It's that, and that's what Paul is calling you to. And as we were to look through, through Romans 12 through 16, that, that's the kinds of stuff he's talking about. He's talking about, you know, as it says here at the end in, in, in 1 Corinthians 13, you know, that it bears all things and believes all things. It's this idea of, I will, I will cover over your sin. I'm not going to point it out every time you blow it. 1 Peter 4.8 says, love covers sin. You know, I, I think of this story of Winston Churchill walking with a friend of his who was a elderly. And, and um, the, fe- the friend fell. And Winston Churchill kept walking. And somebody else said, why why didn't you stop and help him? He said, because I know that my friend would have been mortified if I had helped him. And I would rather allow him to have that dignity by not pointing out that he's a failure. And that's what love does. Love doesn't bring up the pain and, 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 and failures of another person. It doesn't want to do that. It bears. It's that sense of of, of, a, of, a, of a mother covering over his chi- their, their chicken, a, a mother hen covering their chicken, protecting them from the things in the world. It believes all things. It, it, it's, it's that idea of, I'm always going to trust you in spite of the fact that the pattern says you're not necessarily trustworthy. This is where Jesus, this is, this is what Jesus is getting at when he says, turn the other cheek. If they strike one cheek, turn the other. Think about what that's saying. That saying is, the pattern says, you've struck me once, you're going to do it again, and you turn it again. And they strike again. What, do you, what does Jesus say you do? You turn it again. That's the idea. It's trusting. Hoping that they eventually repent. This, this is what Paul is talking about. Enduring all things, hoping, being rejoicing. Now, 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 next week we're going to talk more about some of these other words here in First in Romans twelve of being holy and pleasing and not conform to the pattern of the world. Today, I just wanted to talk about that one thing about being a sacrifice, and love is a sacrifice. Jesus in John fifteen thirteen says, "No greater love has someone than they lay down their life for their friends." Love is sacrifice. And this is what we're talking about when I'm saying, I want to be different. I want to be less angry next year. I want to be more patient. I want to be more grateful. I want to be purer in my heart. More faithful. 
I want to be like Jesus. And make no mistake, being mature Christian is not about Bible knowledge. Now, for many of you, you're like, well, duh, but that's not a duh for everybody. There are some people who really confuse being a mature Christian means I can really quote chapter or verse all day long, have great theology. And I got to be honest, that's not what it is. A mature Christian is not somebody who knows their Bible well. There's a relationship. We'll talk about that next week. But don't miss that the real goal is Jesus-like. That's what a mature Christian is. And that's what Paul is asking for us. We want to be like Jesus. How do you do that? How can I be more ang- less angry next year? Paul, very simply, look, look at that. Look at right there. I appeal to you, brothers. I urge you by the mercies of God. The mercies of God is 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 a is a um, summary word for everything that John that Paul has been saying in the first eleven chapters of this book. He begins in chapter one by laying out the need. We're going to talk about that in a moment, and then he talks about that, that Jesus died, and then he begins to fill out the significance and the implications of all of that. Romans 3 is, you know, that that he was a propitiation for our sin, that he paid for our sin. Chapter 4 is that we are now um, united with Christ. And chapter 6 fills out that if we've died with him, we've been resurrected with him. And in in 7 and 8, it's what is the life like now with Christ? And then 9 and 10 is all about, and God can never, you're never going to be separated from him. That, 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 that's, that's Paul's point here. The mercy of God is the, is, is he's, he's urging you to live a certain way because of, as a result, this word by, it's, it has to do with the means. The result of the mercy of God is to do this. And this is the pattern all through the New Testament. If you were to go to Rome, and, I, and if you're flipping with me, Flip to Colossians chapter 3. He does the same thing. Chapter 1, he all talks about how the, the greatness of Jesus. Chapter 2, he talks about what the cross did for us, that, that he, was, he died and we're reunited with him. And in the second half of chapter 3, he's talking about how he, all these other ways of trying to be a better person doesn't work. And then he gets to chapter 3. And this is the point in this book where he switches from what did Jesus do to what you are supposed to do. And look at how he puts it. Verse 1 of chapter 3. If then, meaning since this is the case, you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of hand right hand of God set your minds on things that are above on not on things that are on the earth for you have died and your life is now hidden with God when Christ who is your life appears you will also appear in, in glory there and then he goes on and says put to death therefore because you have this you've had this thing happen to you you now need to live a certain way See, the gospel is saying that, you, that, that, that Jesus didn't just die on a cross, but that by faith, you two were connected. That's what, whole, that's what he's saying right here. If you have been raised, if you have died with Jesus, if your life is now hidden, meaning all those things are true, it's what he was just saying, on the basis of this reality, you now live a certain way. That's the whole point. By the mercies of God, live this way. That's the point. That that it, the pattern is 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 in in verses in Romans chapter one we have this idolatry of of exchanging the truth of God for a lie. We worship everything else but God, and then in in all of in in, in the gospel, God changes us, gives us a new life, a new heart. And because of that, we can live a different way. 
That's what that, that that's that's Paul's point. That we started off in Romans chapter one as this idolaters, and that is the bent of our hearts. But God has given you a new heart. That's what Ezekiel thirty six is talking about. Which I'm gonna read. Ezekiel thirty six. It's the old. It, it, it's one of the places it talks about the new, old, the new covenant. Ezekiel thirty six, starting in twenty five. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleanliness and from all your idols, which you have, I will cleanse you. It has to do with forget. That's there's there's a forgiveness, but notice what it continues to say. And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit, and put within you. I will put within you, and I will remove the heart of stone, the heart that doesn't respond rightly to God, from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will give you my spirit within you and cause you to walk within my statutes and to carefully obey you. Notice that what God is saying here is I'm not just going to forgive you. I'm going to also, I'm going to change you so that you actually do what you are supposed to do. That's the gospel. And it all happens because of Jesus' death and his resurrection and that by faith you are connected with him. So, you know, they they talk about all these self-help books. You know, how, how do you become more angry? And there's these techniques are helpful, I suppose. But they really boil down to pep talks. Encourage, think, think better about the, your life that you have. Okay, but what if it isn't better? <laughs> we have a reality. And that's all I really wanted to say today, is that we can be changed because of what Jesus has done. That's why I preach the gospel every week. That's why we have communion every week. You need this, this reality. And what I love about communion, which we're going to have in a little bit here, is that it's so tangible. Have you ever realized that? That, it's, that you can actually touch it. Because you, our, our faith is touchable. It's not, it's not an idea. It's not just some thought, well, pep talk, well, it's a great myth. I mean... Sometimes I feel like we think about the resurrection. Well, yeah, Jesus rose from the dead. Fine, yeah, and that really happened. But if that, understand the implication, if that really happened, then real change is actually possible too. They, 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 ha- they go together. Because you have a risen Savior. You have an actual spirit in you, changing you. Now next week we'll talk about the hows. But today it's just saying that the, this, is, this is where it comes. By the mercies of God, instead of worshiping the wrong thing, worship God. It's the new heart. I urge you to worship by, wor- by presenting your bodies as a living sacrifice. So, that's enough for today. It feels weird preaching to what, 15 people, 20 people? But that's what I've been thinking about this week, in the last couple of weeks. How can I be a different person? I want to be different. And it drives me back to this, this reality that we talk about every single week in this church. You can be different. By believing the reality of the mercy of God in your life. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for this morning and these dear people. Lord, we do all want, want to be a very different person than we were. Cure us of our idolatry. Cure us of our, of our um, looking at all the different things in our lives to bring us happiness, to bring us peace, to security, um, of our wrong ways of responding to things. I, I, I know for many of us, our, our lives' circumstances are not going to be any different in a year from now. But Lord, we want to respond differently. So Lord, help us to do that. Help us to be different people this year. By the power of the blood of Christ, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.